This afternoon we're having a conversation with Neil Thorne, his memories of growing up in Waratah and beyond. Hi Neil, you have a long and ongoing connection with Waratah. The whole Thorne family does. So tell us all about it. How did it all start? Well, it started off with a, a family that decided to, to leave the UK, to leave England, from Devon and a little town called Tiverton. To come to Australia, they were they'd been fairly unsuccessful in in Devon and Cornwall in in their pursuits. So they they decided to come to Australia, which was seemed to be a a, a better place to bring up a family. Mary already had four kids, and she had another one on the way in the in the boat. They took three months to get there. They they landed in Brisbane, looking for for. A, a possible goal prospect in the, in the Queensland area. That didn't eventuate. I think in less than 12 months they went to uh, Victoria, went to the Dalesford area, Ballarat area, Blackwood Creek, you know, various places they were. But they, they had various, well, I think they lived in a place called Tent City at one, at one stage, uh, you know, where every miner had a tent and about a six foot square piece of, piece of land and uh, that didn't prove very successful e either but they, sp they spent she had another seven kids while she was at uh, in victoria mount bischoff was discovered and they decided to uh, oh he's a filthy rich mine we're going to come to tasmania and we're going to be part of that and uh, that's how they eventuated at waratah so that was in about 1877 yes yeah, something like yeah. that yep yeah. yeah cool the mine probably had started uh, when they arrived, the mining had started. But the, the wooden tram line was there. They talk about coming up from Burnie and on the wooden tram line in 12 hours, you know. And these were were people from the other side of the world, you yeah. know. And they, yeah. So and that they, would have been drawn by bullock teams, I presume, wouldn't it? Oh, horses. Horse, horse yeah. drawn, yeah, yeah. okay. Horse, horse drawn. Amazing. Yeah. 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 And, uh, they changed horses about every ten miles, I think, and uh, you know it was a yeah. it was a, a pretty rugged old trip. So they got to Rouse's camp, and then they had to walk another <gasps> two or three miles. Yeah. 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 And amazing. what they did then, I don't know. How yeah. they how they got housing. Uh, I reckon they would have had tents to start with, and probably bark huts. Okay. And then they cut down the trees, and they would have split piling. You know had very rudimentary, you know, buildings, that's what they would have done. Yeah. So what stage did they build a large family home on the corner? Oh, well, remember? well in, because they spread out. Okay. They spread from Waratah to Corinna. That family did. They actually first started mining at the, the Hazelwood River, at the Jasper Mine. And they did a bit around the Godkin. One of the one of the daughters spent, I think, all the time at Corinna. She was she was my grandfather's sister, Auntie Jessie. Okay. And uh, you know, because there was at one stage there was eight hundred gold miners at uh, yeah. at Corinna. You know, I don't, don't think ever none of them ever made any money, but uh, they uh, she spent virtually all her life at Corinna. Big, oh. So she was Jessie Ann and she became a Devlin. Yes, yeah. yes she married a James Devlin. Right. Fantastic. So there was 11 of you in the family there? 11 no, surviving 11, children? 11, 11 surviving? Yeah, 11 surviving. One is buried at the Dalesford uh, Cemetery in, uh, in Victoria. Okay. Yeah. 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 She died when she was about 8 or 9. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Catherine. Right. So your dad was Frederick Samuel. Her grandfather was Frederick Samuel. Sorry. Yes, he was. Okay, yes. Lovely looking man, very handsome. I can see the likeness there, most definitely. So, and he... Um... He was a little bloke. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. he wasn't, wasn't a big man. No. Okay. So what did he do in yeah. Warrata? Was he a miner or... or... Some yeah. of the family members, I believe, got into, involved in the um, commercial trade. Well, he went... He was the... Uh, the Hazelwood River, the Jasper Mine, yeah. Yeah, and but he was a uh, 
a water diviner. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And uh, he he talks about surveying the Savage River iron ore body. <coughs> when, when the Savage River started up, I said, oh, well, I've a bit to do with that out there. And he said, well, I, I surveyed that for Rio. Really? Yeah, you know. Wow. <laughs> That's remarkable. <coughs> but from what I can find out about my grandfather, yep. he then decided that he would become commercial. I think his wife was was pretty good at, at doing commercial things. And that was Alice? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so he became, he bought Osmarium and he bought gold. For that. We didn't find that out till I was about, you know, 70 or so. Okay. I couldn't work out how he could buy houses and shops and cars and things like that. Yeah. But that's how he did it. Okay. Yeah, and then he, then he became a shopkeeper. Like James had a shop which he inherited after James died. You know, they had a fight about one stage who should have owned it. But anyway, they, uh, he had a shop, you know, and everybody had a bit of a go at it, a bit of shopkeeping. The shop that Dorothy Wyman had mm -hmm. in the main street, they had that at one stage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the shop is still there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, a fair bit's changed over the years. Goodness the gracious. Yep, so was most of the family, like, you know, the, the children involved, 11, that were, were all the 11 at Warris at one stage? 11 kids? Yes, I think they were, but they, they gradually moved away. Yep. You know, they moved into other sort of enterprises around, some were finished up in New Zealand, you know, uh, the Wymans were all there, they were, they were all siblings, you know, there was heaps of Wymans. So this here became known as the 600. Yeah, you the know, Wymans. there was a... a big family of Devlins, there was a big family of uh, Stanleys, yep. you know, it's all listed in David's book, yep. you know, there's heaps of them. Amazing. Yeah. So how many kids did um, Fred have? Six. Six children? Yeah. And your dad <coughs> was one of them, so yeah. that was John? Yeah, he was, he was the youngest and Bob was the eldest. Right. Oh, okay. And then there were four girls in between. Okay. So John married Edith, yes. Emma. Pain. That's right. Where did they meet? In Morris? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the movies? No, no. They met on the on the um, dance floor at Magnet, I think. Oh. They used to walk the Magnet. Yeah. Dancers. Down Tinstone Creek route? Yeah, well, just down oh. over the west there. Oh, yes, how beautiful. Yeah, they, wow. they'd walk to Magnet and then walk back. Okay. Yeah. So what did your, so your dad work in Magnet? No. no, I don't think he ever worked at Magnet. Okay. You know, he was too young. Magnet, Magnet closed in 1926 or something, didn't it? And, and Dad was Dad was born in 1909, so okay. yeah. he had. My Dad was a butcher. Okay. He had served an apprenticeship at the butcher shop. He had, and he left Waratah for a couple of years. Okay. <coughs> okay. I've got a photo of him in the butcher shop in Melbourne, but he then he came back. Yeah. And. Uh, he, he worked in various places on the mine. He had a couple of tributes, you know, yeah. tributes a great word, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, North Valley, <laughs> he had two tributes there, and I've got the, the certificate. Have you really? I've got the certificate. Oh, we'll have to have a look at that yeah. one. Yeah. Wow. Where he, where he bought the lease or the tribute of uh, both and Cummings, I think. And, okay. uh, but, uh, yeah, he. He worked around the, and on various parts of the mine, but then he, uh, the mine closed, and uh, you know things were a bit very grim when I was about thirteen or fourteen. Okay. You know, yeah. couldn't afford to send me to Burnie to school the first year, grade six. Okay. Didn't get a didn't get a Guernsey the first year. But the next year, my relatives looked after me while I went to high school down here. But uh, okay. and Dad got a job with the EZ company. Okay. They were surveying the Godkin mine. You know, they were doing diamond drilling at the Godkin mine. And then they came into Magnet, and they were they were um, doing the same sort of diamond drilling at Magnet. Oh. And he he uh, he worked for the EZ company for about. 
three years while I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And later on, uh, he got a job. What the, the council did was uh, make it so as they could get to the magnet, like after they'd done this diamond drilling, and then they, they knew there was a lot of ore lost in the big dump that was there. A bloke called Harry Delvatore, mm -hmm. who was a he was a prospector. He got the lease of the magnet, the dump. Right? Really? Yeah. And, and so they cleared the track of all the trees and scrub, so they get a truck down the railway line. Mm -hmm. And then they went out, put a little plant in that battery box that's just there, you know, beside the where the bridge goes across at Magnet. Yeah. That was a little plant that Dad worked in. They had a little truck that they used to go up and it was pick and shovel. They'd go up to the dump and shovel it onto that little truck, oh bring it down and put it through that little battery and they had one table mm -hmm. there. They didn't get much. They, they, they lost more than they got. Yeah, you hear stories like that, don't you? Yeah. So when was that about? Oh, that was when I was about uh, 14, I reckon. Mm -hmm. 13 or 14. I remember going out there in a little old truck. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, three or four blokes working for him. They got and pick and shovel and shovel that stuff yeah. onto the truck. And, well. <laughs> yeah, and it was, a, it was a huge jump. You know, yeah. you know, you could see that it would like a, an airstrip, you know, smooth, beautiful. Oh, the days, yeah. the days. Do you have many memories yourself of Magnet? Like the no, tennis? not not that, except these trips that I did with my dad. Yep. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I used to enjoy that. And uh, yeah. Was Mrs. Shady around when you were around? Yeah, he had a shop. He had yeah. a shop when I was there. Yeah, there's a photo of Mr. Shady with his big trout yeah. that he caught in one of the dams down there. And I was just, we had a shop in Waratah that got burnt down. We had a shop in Magnus. And, um, well, the shop was there, Nick, just down from the, where the butcher shop was. Yeah. There. So, your mum, okay, Edie, she mm. was commonly known as Edie, wasn't fondly known as Edie. Yeah. Did she work or what, did, what was her yeah, main role? Yeah, well, she was. She was, uh, you know, house-bound a little bit, but she worked in school. Yeah. She taught the kids sewing and cooking. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, oh, she did that for all the time I was at high school, uh, primary school. Okay. You know, she did cook a meal for the kids and show them how to sew. Cause she was, a, she was a very good seamstress. She she grew up. She. She made pretty much all the all the all the clothes for the two spring schools. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Wow. So, yeah. so your days at school were pretty good. Do you remember? Because oh, I because yeah. I remember your uncle when I was looking at uh, your grandfather, and uh, he didn't really like school. And I was reading up the notes about Fred, and uh, so so uh, but but when it came down to you guys, you you really enjoyed school. Well, I enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, I had a good time at school. Um, there was never a problem, yep. you know. And then the bed, the boy got on pretty well with the teachers. I could yep. kick a football. I could hit a cricket. I could hit a. We played cricket out on the, you know, that slopey oval out, you know, and the ball would run off the side. But we, we, we played a fair bit of sport. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. So who was a the principal then? Do you remember? Well, the two principals I remember was a fellow called Ken Williams yeah. and, a, and a principal called Mr Mullins. Ah, yes, okay. They're the only two I can remember. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's the time there. So, do you remember who your favourite teacher was? Do you remember the staff at all? Well, Mr Mullins gave me six cuts and he wasn't my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very unjustified. I got caught out in the wrong position. He said, "Well, you'll do." <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Some idea. kids had gone in and wrecked the library, oh. and I'd sort of walked in. And, oh yeah, oh. And, and he was furious about the bird. The, so I was the one that was there, and I, I, you know, I got six cuts for wrecking the library, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get out of it because I was the only one there. <laughs> <laughs> So Neil, you had two years in grade six. Yeah, well the reason being that 
my, my family couldn't have, even though I passed the ability test, okay. and uh, my family couldn't afford to move to Burnie, yeah. so there was nowhere, to, nowhere for me to live, so I just stayed for another year of grade six at Waratah and uh, learned nothing, the same old <laughs> story, you know. But then, uh, like I said, uh, Ruby moved to Wynyard, said she'd, uh, yeah, I'll look after him. Fantastic. And uh, so I, uh, like a lot of other kids from Wynyard, were travelling to Burnie High School on the train. I just they went to East Wynyard and picked the train up every morning and then dropped off to high school. And then in the afternoon we we cruised back to to Wynyard. Wonderful. Yeah. So where did the days when Bill and Ruby lived together? They were in Wynyard. Was that the, the time? Well, they'd been married and Ruby was pregnant okay. with Margaret and in, while she was in Waratah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So that's a big turnaround, having to do two years grade six. Yeah. I mean, that would have been really devastating. And then, yeah, then was, something else has turned yeah, around. I was pretty disappointed because Dad was yeah. driving the Guildford bus then and he used to drive past the, the school at three o'clock and he said, oh, this particular day he was going to call in and see the headmaster. And, yeah. Uh, and he didn't stop. Oh. And uh, yeah, I was pretty devastated with that. Oh. But there, there was horses for courses, you know. You, you, they had no money, they had very little money. They, they couldn't do anything else, you know. Oh. Yeah. 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 I just like to have a, your memories of what the school looked like. There's some, not a lot of photos of the old school, the original school, but it looked quite grand. Quite large in the old days, oh, but there's, I haven't seen any photos of the inside of the school at all. So, can you just tell us? There's a, a few large groupings of students outside the school, and I gather that's where everybody went in during in the first thing in the morning. And were the classrooms straight ahead, or how many classrooms? Well, there was. Well, I think there was at least three classrooms that that ran up Ridgefield Street, right? And then there was a big classroom that ran west. Okay. Yeah. There was a big gymnasium yeah. out in the playground, a big gymnasium. Okay. Right. So and was that... A couple of play sheds, you know, uh, uh, sheds out in the, in the yard where you could shelter sheds sort of thing, you know. There's a photo of Carmel Kenworthy as a young person. So Carmel would have been older than you. Just a little bit, yeah. A little bit older, okay. And in the corner, you can see this beautiful old honour roll of this World War One, And I think it must have been, must have been celebrating the soldiers. It was handwritten, hand-painted. It did go missing. <laughs> <laughs> we can't find it, but that's okay. So, um, and that's about the only image that of the interior of the school. So I presume the desks were the old ones that lifted up and yep, down. Yeah, with the ink wells and, yeah. and every, all that. Yeah, yeah and the ink and wells. The, the big blackboards on the wall with the, with the tables that you had to recite yeah. every morning, you know, that That's pretty basic like stuff. Maps, flag. Yeah, yeah. Some, of, some of that, yeah. Yeah. Did you have to do exams and have regular tests and lots oh, of homework? Yeah, work yeah we did that, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And did you, Dorothy Wyman used to tell us about the time she used to have hot chocolate every day. And I think Bonnie Campton said the same thing. Did you? No. You didn't I can't ever remember that. You can't remember the hot chocolate? No, I can't remember hot chocolate. I just have to walk down to Richard for lunch, you know. Yeah. Or on a, I think Friday, Mum and Mum had had lunch for the, for the school or whoever wanted, you know. Yeah. The students would do some of the cooking, you know. Yeah. And what other antics you got up to when you were at school? Can you remember some of those funny ones? Oh, well, we used to. I I was uh, amazed by the machinery that was down at the battery when that was going. You know, yeah. I used to get down there and watch that, but also watch the the workmen. You know, the the quality of the work that was down there, like not only the the steel work that they were able to do. And, you know, I mean, you, you put a post up recently about North Valley with the, you know, about the steel and that that's down there now. Mm -hmm. In 93, I can't remember why it's there because I don't know anything about it. But most of that steel work was made at Mount Bishop. Mm -hmm. You know, they did 
they'd accept the role still. Yeah. You know, there was a big casting of, of foundry there that they cast their own wheels. There was about at least five foundries, like uh, blacksmiths, fires going down that big shed all the time wow. where, where they were working. That, that was, that just I used to open my eyes and to see the battery working. Amazing. Oh, wow. So, oh, gee. So you can remember the sounds, the people going to work. And, and these, oh, wow. these blokes doing really good work. You know, one of the photos that's in the Athenaeum Hall, there's a really big uh, windlass there. Yeah. Oh, would have been all made in the machine shop, you know. Yeah. The only thing that wouldn't be made were the channels that it sits on. They, they would have been rolled somewhere else. Wow. And everything would have been made in the shop. So was that in that area on the pub hotel side, wasn't it? The, the building's going down. Well, the building is still there. Joe Fagan, that's the building. Oh, that one. Yeah, that's the building oh, that's still there. Because yeah. there were several buildings. Oh, well, there was a, yeah. you know, on the, on the road side, on the main, on the main road side, there mm. was a big carpenter shop, there was a big store, there was several offices, like, it's going south, mm -hmm. and then you had the machine shop. Okay. Yeah. And with an electric, electrician shop at the end of it. You know, the, the railway line was in when I was there, and that's how they brought the ore down. Yep. You know, and that went into the other battery. And the, you know, I've never seen the water wheel battery going. I never saw the electric one going. Yep. Yeah. But this, and the sound. The sound was there. Oh, the sound was much closer to it. You know, it was, it was thumping. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. So, did you ever visit the cow signer plant over the other side much? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, we used it. My dad, when he was, when he had the tribute, yep. they, they had to, they had to burn the ore, you know, that, to get the, the, um, the cop varieties out of it because they couldn't separate it. Yep. So, yeah, well, but they used it for, they, they got half of it going. You know, when Mount Bishop closed down, it sort of all fell to pieces. Mm -hmm. And the Kennedy group, yeah. they needed it as well. Yeah. So they they resurrected half of it. Okay. Yeah, so half of that calcine worked. Okay. It was still belching out sulphur. Amazing. You can never, that smell oh, yeah. is amazing, isn't it? <clears throat> so the Glosiers were involved in that one as well? Yeah. At the same time as the Kenworthy's? Uh, yeah, which one? No, I don't know. They weren't. No, I don't think they were. It was Harrington, Kenworthy, yeah. uh, and a couple of others. I don't think the Glaziers were. No. Right. They came on later on. No, I don't think so. I think they yeah. finished by then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, right, go. No worries. And so, the black tank. Yeah. Yes, Winston and I have been over to the black tank on a few numerous occasions there, and just think, wow. So. As a kid, you would have gone around there. Yeah, would be there all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Because it was easy to get to. Okay. Yes, would have been because that was the only road. It wasn't originally it was going yeah. around the, the right side of the <laughs> mountain, and the left one, left road, was put in sometime in the 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there yeah. was never a road. All the, all those two roads that went around to the western side on the left side, yeah. they they just. They just went to dead ends virtually. They didn't go very far at all. Right. They wouldn't have gone as far as the the police uh, rifle lanes or anything. Like that. Sure. Because the way to get to North Valley yeah. was go right, go past the black tank. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And then quite a steep hill down past the black tank. Yes. And then you come around virtually above North Valley, and then you went uh, a real right hand turn. And there was a few houses there. That's where my only Connie lived from. She was, um, of course, Tom was an electrician, and uh, she had a. They they lived because they they needed an electrician down at North Valley to run the the dredge. And uh, then the then the road came back up the river. So now, North Valley. Okay, once you actually got to around there, you were saying that there were three houses around there. Can you describe what the little the area was like? So it was like a little village, or yeah, it was quite like a little village, <laughs> you shops? know, with with the the river flattening out. 
Yeah. You know, heading down the gully, mm -hmm. and then went up to the right, and I think there was a, a manager's residence up near where the mine site was, where they were. There was a, several tunnels. Yep. Up, up there, that we went into when we, when Dad had the tribute there. But at least we didn't stay in there because the next trip down it had all fallen in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. that was the, the pontoon area? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, was that was about, would have been about a <laughs> kilometre away from where these, you know, back further up the river. Okay. You know, going virtually directly east. Okay. Yeah. Gee, that's really, really interesting. We've been all around there and, and we followed an old road section and when we were at the old workings, and I think the workings were there in the, in the, in the 80s, but they weren't working. Evidence of these amazing old houses, but would have been there, you know, foundations. Then we went up a layer, okay, and we found a roadway. I'm going, wow, this is remarkable. And when you go up further, there was another tier. Okay, and the higher you got, the better it was. But this particular one, the second one, when you were coming around, was clearly a road. And we think that may have been the original route back to Mount Bischoff. Yeah, area. around, around the eastern area. side. The eastern side, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, would have, side. that would have been it. Yeah, and if we'd gone up a little bit higher, we did find another mm. trig point, actually, which was really, really, yeah, really yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, that's amazing. Now, Ring of Rumour, this is in a similar area, is that, is that around towards the Black Tank area or towards more North Bishop area? Ring of Rumour? More, area. well, there'd be more, well, how you would describe it, I would say it, North Bishop. Yeah. But, but see, those, those blokes, that, when they first started up there, they did a lot of uh, high pressure sluicing yeah. just on Don Hill. Right. Just up from where your hut is. Yep. You know. Wow. Yeah, Tell they, me more. Yeah. 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 Well, they had big high pressure pumps digging that the, the downhill out and run, washing it into boxes, and that's how they got their tin. A lot of alluvial tin in up Mount Fair go. Yeah. It was just down the road near the original tin stone creek, near you know near the downhill there. You could see evidence of this road. Once upon a time, that was there. Now it's just all trees, unfortunately. And we're going. There's something. Must have been something substantial there before. Yeah. And it may have thought. I thought. Well, perhaps have gone towards Bishop Extended, maybe down that way. I'm not sure. No, I can't. Because they that. changed it all. A lot of it was when when they put the car park in um, after they closed the mine down in recent times. Okay, this is sort of probably the 90s or something. There was a road that went around, and it sort of stopped because everything had been pushed down. I think that may have been one of the roads that took you around to North Valley. Oh no, North Valley Bishop Extended. I'm not sure, but when you were talking been. about this, it could have been, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't tell you that. Most of the time, those two roads around to the left were used. Yeah. They were in, going in there getting gravel okay. for AFH uh, logging roads. That's, a, that's what those, but there's a couple of quarries up in there. You're right. Yeah, so that would explain a lot about Bishop Extended because it's quite a you know rock quarry yeah. there. Gee, that's really interesting. Waco, we had this beautiful black tank. Was it always black? I suppose it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah. And that supplied water to the power station. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's all. Yeah. Right. Okay. So do you remember the Camptons having uh, Bonnie Campton's father had a tribute or something or other around that black tank area because Bonnie... No, that was down, down on the creek. Down on the creek. Past the power station. Past the power, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, they were getting what, what Bischoff lost. Oh, so it's down further past the power station? Past the power station. Okay, yes, because Bonnie was saying that her father used to go down there and like that and to the power station, and it's just down there, and then you turn right. Yep. So, but we haven't found it yet, unfortunately. But well, I think when the, I think they were still working there when the, when the, the, uh, the dam burst the first time. Oh, yes, true. And, uh, and, they, and I think it washed everything away.
they were really worried. They were about worried that, that, that Les was down there and he got washed away as well, but he wasn't down. <laughs> that's real lucky. Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh no, that, that's, a, that's remarkable. Some time ago, when we were having another chat there, we were talking about this amazing story about the oil boots in the olden days. And, and I've never forgot this story because when you go in the bush, Magna and around Mount Bischoff and everything, you always find these old shoes. <laughs> we have to tell us a story well, about that one. I can remember my dad coming home from where he was working in the mine. Plus my uncle worked with us for a fair while, wrote Reg Payne and wrote the book. He was part of the Harrington Consortium as well. But uh, yeah, they had oil their boots. With, with bull oil, they used to call it, with, that's boiled oil. Right. And, uh, you know, then dry them in front of the fire. Yeah. And that, that stiffen up like boards. And they, mm. then these blokes have to get their boots on the next morning and they'd get the, the fat out of the, the frying pan or something and, and oil, oil their socks and force their, force their feet into, the, into their they, boots. Why did they do it? Why did they oil their boots? Because they'd fall to pieces of them. Oh. The acid used to get in and the boots would fall to pieces the first day if they didn't oil them. Wow. Yeah. Gee, we just imagine. So that explains a lot, doesn't it, about what it preserved that leather's like. It's still there. Uh, there's boots laying all around the mining area of Tasmania. <laughs> like that, just like that. <laughs> For that reason. Wow. Yeah. Oh, what have I covered? Gee, that's really interesting. Want some more great stories like that? I love those stories. <laughs> have you got some notes you want to have a look at? Because I think I've talked enough about school. Is there yeah. anything I needed to cover more there? Well, to go? oh, yeah, Jim. Yeah, you know, my 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 first memory mm. as a child. Yep. Because. Yep. My dad, you know, when I was three or four, my first memory was a child. Yeah, great. That I, I was diagnosed with polio. Were you? Yeah, very mild polio. Yeah. And that was, that was real tragedy as far as my mother was concerned. And of course, my dad had just been called up to, to the army and he was in Brighton. So, uh, I can remember getting on the train at Guildford. Yeah. My grandmother was always it was was in Burnie. So we came to Burnie and there was a specialist in at the Devon Hospital at La Trobe. Mm -hmm. So we another train trip to La Trobe. And you know, I, I, I had a very mild case of polio, but there was a lot of polio around at at, at that time. And that's my first remembrance of something dramatic happened. I can't remember anything else prior to that, you know. Then I come back and went to school and, you know, school just happened, yeah. you know. Yeah, did they, did they have, give you any treatment? Did you have to have your legs braced? Or no, anything? no. no. See, there was a lot of people who had braces. So it was yeah. in my left arm, just... Oh, some, in your arm? Yeah, yeah just yep. something happened with my left arm, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that lovely photo of you and Wilbur Payne. Yeah. So do you remember what, can you tell me more about that beautiful photo? Oh, well that was Tom and Connie wedding. Okay. Yeah, and that's about all I can tell you about it. Mum made all the clothes. It's beautiful. Yeah, because yeah, you just look so cute, the two of <laughs> So now tell us about the shops in Waratah. Okay, so there were particular shops that you all favourite? Yeah, well Nancy's. You know, it was a general most of but she used to sell ice cream as well. Oh, really? Yeah, but like I, was, I, I said, they used to come in these insulated bins, you know. They, two people have to pick them up. Really? Yeah, yeah. and they'd come, in, come on the train, on the mail train to Guildford. Yeah. The Guildford bus would pick them up and bring them in and deliver them. With a lot of other groceries, farmers' stores in the middle of the street, you know, there'd be bags of flour and bags of sugar and all that sort of thing, you know. You know that, that's how most of the produce came to the, to the store. Occasionally Aussie 
would take his truck to Burning mm -hmm. and he'd, he'd have a truckload of stuff. But the interesting thing about that was, you know, we talk about our, uh, all the regulations and things we have now, the truck would be full of some sort of special vegetables they couldn't get up there or groceries or tin fruit. But it'd have about three or four cartons of jelly on it as well. <laughs> 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 you know, coming up through the gorge. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, so you, you guys that used to attend the cinemas, to go to the movies. Oh yeah, once yeah. a year, once a week. I was used to run the movies. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Do you remember any of the movies at all? Oh, I remember the Phantom of the Opera. Frightened the life out of me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one thing I do remember. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Right. And going to Martha Robinson's shop for ice creams and lolly. Nancy. 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 Nancy Robinson's yeah. shop. Yep. That's right. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean she and we my mum and dad played uh, badminton and so did Nancy, even though she had a bad hip, she could still play badminton. So we'd finish up down at the shop there with, uh, after the badminton because we used to play in the in the in the hall that was next to your St James uh, Hall. Yes, yeah. and that's where we used to play badminton. Didn't play in the big hall. Played yeah. in the back. He was a popular figure in Morita. Everybody knew John, didn't they? In the then his photography, he was amazing. Oh, Jack Robinson. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jackie. You call him yeah, Jackie. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, everybody knew Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was yeah. he like? Well, you know, I was too young to know him really well, but uh, uh, I remember him taking a lot of photos of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gee, it was remarkable, wasn't it? How he captured. But there was two so of them. You see, they they reported they they provided photographs for both the newspapers, the Examiner and the, and the Advocate. Yep. You know, and his brother did as well. Mm. You know, they, they, they were very probably prominent in the, you know, in the newspaper world around the, that, uh, you know, around Waratah, it was all in its heyday. Oh, it was just remarkable. You go into the weekly courier, courier and almost every issue of the courier there's a photo of about Waratah. Yeah, that's Isn't right. It was just, a, just an amazing, you know, vibrant town, once a little town once upon a time. Yeah. Gee whiz. And you can remember most of the, the shops and the houses. So the drill hall, just quickly, that was on the corner, on the corner there, wasn't it? The yeah. drill hall next to the butchery? Yeah. Okay, so it went from the butcher. Yeah, a shady shop was in front of it. Okay, so Shady Shop was in front, then the drill hall, hall behind. Yep. Coming back, then there would there was the the post office, the original post office. Yeah, where it is now. Where it is now. Yeah. What was after that? How did it go? Just in the Waratah Hotel. Yep. In the Waratah Hotel. That yep. filled up that gap. Okay. Oh. It was quite it was a big, big hotel. hotel. Quite a big hotel. Wow. So where was Farmers? Is that next to that? Or back further? No, the farmers were between the two pubs. Right, okay. And there was a bookmaker shop as well beside uh, beside farmers. Okay. On the on the southern side. Gotcha. Yeah. And that was where Carl Gray had his bookmaker shop. Okay. And then Mick Fagan had it after that. In that one in that same position? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So after the Bischoff Hotel there was what was after that? There was a, there was a little shop there, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Hart Kerrison shop, was it? Sorry? Hart Kerrison shop, yeah. Yeah, well, Dorothy's little shop, or Thorn shop. Yep. And then Hart Kerrison shop, shop. Which, is, which is mushroom now. Yes, yep. So, yep. Yeah. And yep. then Kessel shop was up on the corner. On the corner. Okay, beautiful. So, going up that street, that's Hall Street, isn't it? Going up that street. The steep one. Yeah, the steep one. Where was the Salvation Army place? Was that near the Catholic Church? No. No? The Salvation Army was next to Kobe's house. Oh, was it? Yep. Yeah, on the top side of Kobe's house. Okay, yeah. That's where the Salvation Army was. Right. And so the Catholic Church was up the top on 
Yeah, about where uh, where uh, Ivan's Tuna's yeah. place is. Yeah, because the original where you can you can see where you would go in the pathway there. That's still there, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And next door to that, that was where Lexi lived, was it? No, I think no, uh, I think next one. Mm, Margaret Brown's family. Yeah. Brown's family. Yeah. Okay. So where the Egan family lived in the commercial bank there? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's beautiful old building directly opposite that, where it's all blank there now, just up the road from Kessels. Was there anything there ever? Uh, no, not that I can remember. No, yeah. But over the road, um, yep. on the other side of Ritchie Street, uh, there was a vacant block on the corner. Okay. Yep. And then Red Spinks lived in a big house oh. there. Red was his brother. Yep. And he drove the buses as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. It's good to know exactly and where they And he in. married Jean Kennedy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we know them. Yeah. So Neil, pigeon racing. That was really big in Moratah. Very big in Moratah. Very big in Moratah. Yeah, There's an amazing a number of pigeon lofts there was in Waratah. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. But it was, uh, you know, once you got old enough mm -hmm. to run a fair distance, you got to, like that, they had kept the pigeon, they'd let the pigeons go from wherever. Mm -hmm. And then they'd catch the pigeon, take the ring, put it in a tobacco tin, and then they'd give it to someone and to run, and it, it did run a certain distance. Yeah. And they might have ten runners to bring the to bring the ring in, and they'd they'd time you on that. You know. There you go. And I I I got big enough at one stage to to run pigeon ring in. <laughs> really? Is that what they call a pigeon ring? Yeah. Fair go. So how far yeah. did you have to run? Oh well, some of them were out uh, where the out where the recreation ground is. So you imagine running up where the, where they used to time the birds when the when the ring came in was under the veranda where Kobe's shop is. They do it in the main street. Fair go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Some you know, they had various ways, like right up the top end of Ritchie Street, yeah. you know, where where Stokes is or where the the mayor is right up there. Mm -hmm. Bus Thorn lived mm -hmm. in that house. And he had a big pigeon lot. So you have to run down, you run all the way down there, down Ritchie Street, down the steep hill, and around the... <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing. And it's still there, see, with um, Brian Chilcott, it's got pigeons and... Yeah. Yeah, they've never really left the area, have they? Gee, that's interesting. That's really, really interesting. And Ray Wyman had some pigeons too, didn't he? Oh, oh like everybody had. The, the, they used to bet on them, <laughs> you know? And, you know, they get wild if they... Pigeon wouldn't trap, and yeah. the pigeon would fly around. A couple of them got the shotgun out and bloody shot the pigeons. <laughs> okay, that's gorgeous. Absolutely. Oh dear, oh dear. But they are really good memories, those ones here. Yeah. Have you got many memories about the um, Muddy Creek at all? You know, because no, all the time... I, never, I don't think I ever got to Muddy. If I did, I was too small to remember. Yeah, exactly. It would have all finished, but the yeah. trains used to go past anyway. Yeah. They? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. But they had quite a story. So after Muddy Creek, I suppose the sports continued, therefore, at the Oval, at the yeah. sports ground. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> well, they, they had chops. They didn't have too many running races, but the chops continued for a long time. You know, and they had chops, but, but, but quite a substantial chopping ring out of where they have it now. You okay. know, exactly where they have it now. Yeah, yeah. And football is really big. So oh, your yeah. family were heavily involved in football. Yeah, well, there was only three teams when I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> when my father was playing. Yeah. You know, and uh, that was Parawi, uh, Bischoff and Waratah. Oh, okay, yeah. Parawi. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had a team at Parawi for some reason or other. I've, I've never worked out why they why they had a team at Parawi, but Bishop and Morita used to have a team. You know, it was a pretty fierce competition. Yeah. You know, good football, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just um, getting back into um, the wood chopping, 
Did you do much wood chopping yourself? No. No? Dad did. Yes? Yeah. Okay, and you're... Oh, it was your playground, that Waratah area. So yeah. there were some really exciting things you used to do as kids, you know. I believe you did a lot of hunting and shooting and all that did, sort of stuff. did do a lot of... Because my father's a real bushman and, and all his best friends were as well. Like my, my uncles and cousins, they... You know, we, we would go to the bush every weekend. Just around Warrisville? Yeah, yeah not yeah. too far out, you yeah. know. Not, uh, we'd go down to the Wandle River, we'd go to the Fossey River, we'd go to... Uh, we'd, we might get as far as Guildford, you know. Uh, yeah, especially when the, when the roads were, were put in, but... Uh, you know, we... It was just a day out. Yeah. And, and I've got photos that, that show the that was their relaxation. My mum and dad would go to the bush together. Lovely. You know? And and so so with the rest of the family, you know, he mm -hmm. he would be these hunting dogs and three or four women are, are, are with them as well, you know, they're out in the bush having a you know, like a you know, more or less a picnic. Yeah. But you'd come home with a couple of wallabies and that'd be the meat for the week. Fantastic. You know? Cool. And what but, did you take? For, what did you take for lunch in your drinks? Well, I can remember the lunches that my mother used to make. Mm -hmm. um, and this... Uh, this would be a half pasty. Uh, a wallaby sandwich. A piece of cake. And a bit of fruit. That was my lunch. Wonderful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. Now, and, a, of... and a bottle of tea. Oh, okay. A bottle of tea. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Cold bottle of tea. Wow. White tea or black tea? You were black tea. Well, we used to boil a billy, like, we'd, if yep. we'd sit down for lunch, we'd light a fire and we'd boil a billy, but we'd take a bottle of tea with us yep. to keep going until we lit the fire. Did you ever find anything scary, like in the bush as a kid, you know, like, you know, tigers, devils? Snakes? Plenty of snakes. Plenty of snakes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a problem with snakes. There's snakes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You didn't see any th tigers? No, no. They were no. probably long gone in those days. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 But there was plenty of wildlife around Warrior. Yeah. You know, the possums, you know, wallabies, you know, all, all that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 But the, you know, the white grass plains were, were just beautiful as far as I was concerned. I'm just hoping they keep them like that. You know, they were great places to go, you know, yeah. they were they were like welcoming, you know, and and around the white grass plains there's an open, uh, open bottom myrtle and if you were going to camp out for the night in Winston and uh, how, how nice it is to camp under the open, the open bottom myrtle, you know, it's yeah. terrific. You know, just beautiful yeah. spots. You know, air, moss, you moss. Know. Yeah, nice. It's beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And you guys as kids too would have gone up to Mount Bischoff a lot. Oh, I yeah. mean, that would have been your playground. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And a the trick. There was, there really wasn't any safety issues. Like, yeah. None that we thought of. <laughs> you know, we, well, the, the worst accident I had on Mount Bischoff was we rode the bike. Well, three of us rode a bike up to Mount Bischoff. Mm -hmm. And coming back down the Donnell, very close to your, okay. I dropped something into the front wheel, and we all went over the top. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a bit of skin off that day. That's, that's the, okay. That, yeah. yeah, but that's what kids do. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're good memories, those ones there. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And um, and so as part of the chores and everything you would have done around the place, it would have helped. Mum and Dad chopped the wood and everything. Yeah, well, wood was, yeah, wood was, you know, a essential item. Yeah. Plus we had a wood fire in the in the kitchen, and both kitchens we had, you know. And I I religiously used to light the fire every morning. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have to chop the wood? Yep. Yeah. 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 But it was usually done with a cross cut saw or an, and an axe. You know, never had any chainsaws in those days. No, no. So you learned how to chop wood while you were really young? No, oh, very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Machine shop yeah. had a big 
sandstone grinding the big one as big as that ball. Yeah, wow. And and Dudley Kenworthy was running the machine shop at that, mm -hmm. at that stage. So we'd all go down and sharpen our axes on this, you know, mm -hmm. get them razor sharp. Of course. And that, that's what happened there. Oh no, you dropped it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'd never trust a half axe, you know, because it comes down there. <laughs> Oh, the no. other cut I've got on my foot, and I won't show you, I've, I've nearly cut my foot off. Oh, did you really? Yeah, with one of my dad's racing axes. Oh, no. I took it out in the woodshed, woodshed and dropped it, up, and, it <laughs> and all, all I had on was a pair of gum boots, and it cut straight through the gum boot. <laughs> and it went straight through your gum boots? Yeah. <laughs> I went back to Waratah for, you know, after the school, where I finished and give him a hand to cut pulp, I cut pulp with it for perhaps a month, mm -hmm. you know, pretty hard work, and uh, and then Dad at that stage he had an old truck, and uh, and there was a mechanic used to come up from Burnie to service some Joe's trucks, and his name was Stan Allen, okay. and uh, and at this stage the, the old truck Dad had wanted a, a minor repair, and he got Stan to fix it. And, just sort of said to Stan, well, you wouldn't be wanting an apprentice, would you? And, oh yeah, I might, I might, you know. Yeah. So, so that's my first job was with Stan Allen as, as his mechanic apprentice. And uh, so, uh, you know, four nights, night school, mm -hmm. which really annoyed me a little bit. Because, yeah. you know, I'd done side say and maths three at high school. Yeah. Down past, and yeah. it was like going to kindergarten, you know. <laughs> it was like going to kindergarten, you know? oh, but anyway, no. I had to do it, yes, you know. And uh, you know, I spent five years with Stan. In mm -hmm. that stage, my mum and dad had moved down, okay, you know, down to South Burnie, and that's how I come to meet Pam because oh. she was part of the South Burnie mob. Nice. Well, I got friendly with her brother Kevin, and uh, you know, we all used to be at the French's house, just about as much as I was at uh, the Earth's down. So at that stage, we were doing a fair bit of work for Joe Fagan. Okay. So I just said to Joe, do you want a mechanic? He said, yeah, you've got a job. <laughs> wow, yeah. So you worked for Joe for a while? Two years. Two years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, but I lived with him at that big house as well. Oh, did you? Yeah, with him and, him and Joe. And, you know, that was great, because mm -hmm. Mum, Knew him. They were good friends of the family. Yeah. Mum's still very protective of me, you know, yes. going to this bloody rough mining town and live up with all those drunks and all the rest of it, you know. <laughs> so she she actually came up and talked to him and well, could could he live with you? And she said, Yeah. And she's a great cook, absolutely great. Oh wow. Yeah. Really? So when was this about? Nineteen what? Uh well, uh, it would have been about 1955, 56. I, I did my national service in 56 while I was working for Joe Fagan, three months national service. Yeah. I bought myself a pretty good little Volkswagen and I did. You know, you, ought to, you had to be at Waratah at the night time because all the trucks would come in and they'd be broken. You know, have something to. So I worked probably till 10 o'clock. Yeah. And I got all that fixed. No, I eventually didn't stop up Waratah very often. Yeah. <laughs> I came down fairly, fairly uh, often, and uh, then we decided to get married. And uh, Pam said, oh, "Well, I don't think I want to live in Waratah." Oh. So um, well, I left Waratah, and Joe got another mechanic anyway. Okay. And, uh, but. While I was working for Joe, Savage River virtually was starting up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I did a fair bit of work out there. Yeah, I mean, special about life in general for you. That's a pretty good Big, question. Big, deep, philosophical yeah. thought. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good question. I, you know, you've, you've got to be as natural as you can as yeah. far as life's concerned. Uh, the, you know, my family's been my life, really. Yeah. Um, 
but it's just really interesting. I don't know what it is. It's something in your system, isn't it? You know, you keep going back to Waratah. You've yeah. got that, it's like in your system. A lot of people go back to Waratah, you know, and I've learnt about Waratah and that you were, you know, you were born there, <laughs> you know? right. and you had the family connection there, your ancestral family connection, really special. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. lovely. It's a special part of my life. Yeah, yeah. 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 And meeting so many amazing people as well. But the, what's really special too is having the memories. It's all yeah. about the memories and. Yeah, yeah. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I've got my memory. <laughs> I think my memory is pretty good, actually. Oh, you've got incredible memory. Yeah. Just love it. You know, yeah. I love hearing the stories. You know, of times gone by, and and me not having that, you know, real family connection there, uh, really, is that um, there's evidence. There's evidence of these things that went on. I see the evidences. You know, I meet people like you. And, that, and you have the amazing ability to put this picture in your head of how things were and the sounds and the things that you'd get up to as a child and going up to the mountain and the adventures and some of the little things that you get up to, up to mischief, typical kid-like. Yep. You know, but there's so many people who don't get that opportunity to play in the bush. No, no. You know, to go out and discover stuff and hurt yourself and oh, you know, yeah. just to be a kid. Yeah, but yeah. it's a fairly, I would say I've, I've had a fairly well-developed life, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, we, we, we've seen kids because Pam have been involved in the education department, yeah. yeah. Don't know what a sheep is, don't know what a cow is. Yeah, know. exactly. Or where our milk comes from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so we're lucky, aren't we? We are. All those simple things, you know. Yeah. 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 Very simple things. Very lucky. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. thinking about my life and times at Waratah, they really do come back to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, this last little period with on the board, it's been really good. Yeah. You know, I've enjoyed that. You know, Waratah was an enjoyable place for me to live. You know. it's wonderful. But the, it's not the only place that's been yeah. enjoyable. There's been a lot, of, a lot of joy in my life. I can't, I can't regret anything. Yeah. You know, I can't regret anything. Oh.